What's going on guys? My name is Dustin and this is End on a Make and tonight I just wanted to hop on really quick and talk a little bit about uh, the Denver Nuggets who I think might be in a really good position to emerge as one of the top teams in the West. I think they're poised for a deeper run uh, than they've had the last couple years. I know they've had a couple disappointing finishes uh, to their seasons in the playoffs uh, in the bubble and then the year before that. Um, and I think, you know, the the big acquisition at the trade deadline of Aaron Gordon, it's only a couple games old, but it's already looking like it's going to work out almost exactly how kind of like analysts everybody was, was hoping it would, was predicting it would. Uh, so I just wanted to hop on and talk about that and a couple other things um, about the team uh, really quick. So we'll get into it. Uh, Aaron Gordon. Like I said, he's only played three games. Denver's currently on a four-game winning streak, uh, technically from when they made the trade. They've not lost since. Um, small sample size, but they have a couple solid wins, including the Clippers. They pretty much dominated that game for the most part. The Clippers got back in it late. Uh, in the fourth quarter, it kind of tightened up again, and then the Nuggets were kind of able to just, you know, weather the storm and blow... Not, we not blow... But like weather the storm and, and hold on and kind of build a little bit of a cushion back up and escape with, you know, a good win over the Clippers with Paul George, Kawhi, both playing. And and I think that that's kind of like it's early on with Aaron Gordon being on the team. But it really like that type of matchup against the Clippers is exactly why Denver goes out and gets an Aaron Gordon type. Uh, so, so far, scoring wise, he's fitting in kind of. Exactly as you would expect someone with his skill set to fit. He's playing very well off of Jokic. He's averaging about 11 points a game. He's getting those cuts to the rim on those Jokic passes. Um, he's finding, you know, he's making the smart plays. getting the open threes, which, you know, he's only 25% in those three games so far. Which, not good, but he's getting the open looks. And those will, I'm sure, start falling for him. But the biggest thing is how he is playing off of Jokic. In terms of you know hitting passing lanes, cleaning up rebounds um, on on offense, getting those offensive boards, and then just cutting to the rim or hitting those those elbow shots off of those Jokic passes, it kind of really really opens up the offense a bit more. But the thing that has stood out to me through his first three games with the team and why I was was so compelled to hop on here and and talk about it is the defensive end. So. In Orlando, he played like he knew he had to be the guy, like he had to be the superstar that did everything for the team. And, you know, debate that if you will, like debate, you know, how successful he was at that or not. Um, in Denver, that's just not the case. Like he's got Jokic, who is literally the NBA.com favorite for MVP right now at the level he's playing. I think he's at like 26 points. 11 rebounds and like eight assists a game for them. Uh, he's just steadily dominating. He's so consistent. And to do that from the pos the center position is just, we haven't seen it in a long time. If he gets the MVP award or if Embiid comes back from his injury, which he's uh, reportedly coming back this weekend, um, and a center wins it, it'll be, be the first time since Shaq that a true center has won the award, which is crazy to think about how long that actually is ago now. But with Jokic playing at that level and Aaron Gordon there, it raises the ceiling of the team just defensive. Like, offensively, obviously, yes, because Aaron Gordon is a is a strong scorer, a strong offensive player in the league. But defensively, what I've really enjoyed seeing from him is just the display of his athleticism. So they got him basically because Michael Porter Jr. is so inconsistent and constantly gets exposed on defense. They let Jeremy Grant go, who is now playing out of his mind in Detroit. And I think they were like, well, I, I guess we got to trade for Aaron Gordon is kind of playoff insurance and is like, bummer we let Jeremy Grant walk. And so far he's paid off because his ability to switch, I think the, there was a stretch of the Clippers game the other night that I saw that he went from, you know, guarding Terrence Mann to Paul George to Kawhi Leonard basically like, consecutive times down the court i saw him step out and try to body up on like zubak um not quite i didn't see too much of like him like switching on to the other guards um but i've just the, that switchability that ability to 
to just stay athletic, to use his, his sheer athleticism, his size for his position with how they're using him and how they're playing him so far in Denver. He's really able to give those guys fits. And in the playoffs, to make those long runs, that's what they're going to need him for. They're going to need him to lock up, not lock up, because I don't know if he's locking up Anthony Davis, LeBron James, um, Zion if the Pelicans make it. Like, you know, there's all those big Kawhi, Paul George, there's all those top tier forwards in the West that, you know, it's it's probably a long shot to say he'll completely lock anybody up, but he's certainly going to be a lot bigger of an impact on defense than, you know, Michael Porter Jr. So where you're happy that there might be a chance that MPJ scores, you know, 18, 20 points in a game, Aaron Gordon can give you like 15 with some solid defense on the other end. And that's something that kind of just raises that floor for, for Denver altogether. Uh, the, the big thing... Um, for me as far as like what could be holding Denver back when it comes crunch time is actually the guard play and that's crazy to say because we all saw the level that Jamal Murray was playing at in the bubble and throughout the playoffs last season um and this season he's just been up and down he's been inconsistent which has kind of been the knock on him up until the the breakout bubble performance last year so to see him kind of go back to that mean um it's tough because you don't want to, you know, completely sell and say they have no chance because Jamal Murray is going to just not have it. But with that type of inconsistency game to game, I really thought that there were going to be players for like a George Hill type um, at the deadline as well. I know there weren't a lot of guards being bought out. Uh, Kyle Lowry made a lot of sense to me for Denver. I know they they had tried to get him as well, but I think Toronto's asking price was just too high. Um, but it you know they needed that that extra guard that could take some of the some of the playmaking onus off of off of Jamal let him focus solely on scoring and just kind of kind of lift it so now they're going to have to roll with uh, they have Monty Morris they have Facundo Campazzo with his absolute insane assist package that dude is going no look behind the back through the leg like his He's insane. He's like watching a video game come to life. It's it's incredible. I love him. I love watching him play. And then Will Barton. And, you know, say what you will. Um, obviously, that team runs through, through Jokic. But I think that that guard spot is going to be, you know, is going to be the issue. If Jamal Murray is having an off night, the, the Nuggets are in a better place now because they have Aaron Gordon who we have seen, you know, explode for, for high-scoring games, but he's not going to have that pressure of, like, okay, I have to take 25 shots and be the man tonight. He's going to be able to play a more fluid style of basketball, play off of Jokic's passes, and it's going to open up things a lot more to where, you know, they're going to have not a consistent high score, but, like, they're going to get consistent points from him. Um, and that should help a little bit with the Jamal Murray, like, if he's having an off-shooting night. Um, that Clipper game, something that really stood out to me, and part of the reason why the Clippers were able to make such a big comeback in that game, is that the Nuggets only scored 11 bench points for the whole game. 11. That's crazy to me to think that they win an entire game. The team scored, I want to say it was like 104 to 100 or something like that. And the Nuggets only had 11 bench points. And if they did not have Aaron Gordon, who I think finished with 15 for that game, they probably would have lost. It was I think Jamal Murray had 23. Jokic had like 23 or maybe 20. Um, Should have written that down. Sorry. Um, but that's a game that the Nuggets would normally lose because, you, you know, you need that depth. You need that bench depth. So to have a Gordon there really plugs an issue for them. I just think they're going to, you know, they're only going to go as far as that as that guard depth specifically will take them. Uh, they currently sit fifth in the West. It was a slow start for them, despite Jokic pretty much being the MVP favorite almost all season. It was, you know, him and Embiid 1A, 1B, depending on, you know, who you liked, who you who you enjoyed more, really, it seemed. Um, and still you know they had that slow start teams were kind of like oh did they peak last year is this gonna be you know crater to earth kind of figure out what to do with everybody but they've righted the ship a bit like i said four straight wins uh some quality wins in there too 
as Aaron Gordon gets in even more rhythm with the team, I think you're going to see that offense start to hum a bit more. And I think that that could help Jamal Murray as well, who, let me be fair, he took over at the end of that Clippers game. Like, he was like, "Uh uh-uh, we're not losing this. And he hit some huge shots. So I know he has it in him. I'm just saying from the perspective of, like, I'm a Laker fan, and if I'm watching them struggle, you know, if I'm watching Jamal Murray struggle against the Lakers, and I'm like, okay, cool. But having Aaron Gordon there, I'm a little more concerned because it's like, oh, he had a game where I think he hit like t- nine or ten threes in the game. Um, and so, like, you you just – when you have that extra piece that you know you can count on and then you have, like, the wild cards of, like, a Porter Jr., Monty Morris could always have, you know, have big nights. Um, it just, you know, you never know. And Jokic isn't the type so far to be, like, the aggressive takeover, ball dominant, I'm taking the shots. But I think – as this team grows and as this team continues to to build that chemistry, I think we could see that a little bit more. I think we could see him start to kind of establish that dominance a bit more on nights where other guys don't have it. Uh, but ultimately, you know, I think Denver is in a really prime spot. And if they end up not getting the top, you know, first or second seed, if they end up fourth or fifth and they have to have a tougher run to it, I think, you know, playing in Denver is still an advantage for them. I think there are not a lot of teams that want to travel to Denver and and deal with the altitude, deal with all of that uh, night in, night out in a series. So I think they're in a really good spot. I don't know if they're going to be, you know, the top team coming out of the West or heading into the playoffs, I should say, but I think they should definitely be taken more seriously. I think the injuries to LeBron and Anthony Davis definitely have to put, you know, Lakers fans – kind of got to put them in into reality a little bit. It's a little more dire than you would have thought. They got the win tonight. They looked good against the Kings. Kuzma looked great. But, you know, that team is only going as far as those two superstars are taking them. And if if you have the Nuggets playing like this where they can weather the storm of a Paul George – well, Paul George didn't really have a good game. But, I mean, but Kawhi Leonard is always clutch in the playoffs. And if Denver is built to handle that, they are in absolutely a great spot to make another deep run. Uh, so we'll see. Um, they play again tomorrow. We'll see how, how they continue to figure things out, um, how Aaron Gordon continues to fit in his role, if he can keep up with the defensive pace, and and just kind of see what the limit and what the potential ceiling is for, for this team. Um, if you agree, let me know. If you think that there's another team that's a bit in a better position or if you think Denver is going to kind of come back to earth, let me know too. Um, I'm not usually a Nuggets fan. So I have no no skin in the game with this. I, you know, I respect Jokic. I think he's great, but I just I really for some reason feel like this is this is a team that is going to start to they made the right move and I think they're going to start to gel uh as we get closer to the playoffs and I think that that is a scary thing for the league. Uh so just let me know what you think and I will be back soon. Thank you.